All right, so here we are having a look at the script that I've written for the test page. I've done this in Word and I use a particular template that I've designed myself. Uh, I use it for my webcomic and I use it also for the test pages. I have this all this stuff written down here, right? But I'm not going to read every single line of it because that would just take too much time and you guys will fall asleep. So what we're going to do instead is basically, I'm just going to quickly tell you what the page is about. It's basically a chase scene between the protagonist and the target. The target is going to reach a plaza, an open space, and there it's going to call for backup. And then this massive robot is going to come and stand in between the protagonist and the target, and that's it. That's page one. All right, so here we are in Clip Studio Paint, and we're going to start getting that layout under control. So now that we've had a very quick look at the script, uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is literally just very, very vaguely block in the borders of each panel and, you know, just roughly sketch more or less where I want things. So it might not all make perfect sense at the beginning, but it definitely will in a second. Uh, so just uh, what I do, make sure to have the pencil selected and brush size is 15 is just fine for me. Uh, here you can see that it could be bigger if you really wanted to or smaller but for now just really quickly blocking in things I think that is really the most important thing alright so let's quickly speed things up so we can quickly get through this so there you go in extremely simplified layout it's basically panel number one Detective Logan chasing his target, panel number two, Naomi talking back to Detective Logan, panel number three, important, big and open, which shows the main target running away. Then panel number four, Detective Logan is uh, running sideways with some uh, uh, speed lines or some blur effect there. The next panel, the marketplace, and then moving on to the panel number six, Android jumps up from far uh, in the distance, so it's a bit like um, a silhouette. <laughs> and then the Android lands, Detective Logan is right there. So I'm quite happy with this. It gives a very rough idea of where we're going. And what I'm going to do right now is basically get into the more details and use some of Clip Studio Paint's tools to block things in and make it look a bit better. All right, so now that we have the layout more or less drawn out, uh, we can start working with the lettering. Uh, there's a reason why I do the lettering first. Um, it's because I want to know, kind of like in storyboard mode, what my story is all about. So say if I had a comic book of 20 pages or something, I always draw it out like this first in layout mode with all the text um, and I do that so that when it's done I go through it like I would a normal comic book just to test the flow of things you know is the tempo right you know is the am I generating the right feeling that I want all the rest is just detail and you know it just makes things look better but this is really the most important thing for me and that's the reason why I do the lettering at such an early stage so here in Clip Studio Paint for lettering, it's a really fun process. I really like it. Uh, and that's because it's all really just made easy. I'll, I'll show you immediately what I, uh, what I mean. So let's um, select the lettering here. So in my case, it's right here. You might also notice that, you know, if it's selected on this, this icon right here changes. So if you can't find the letter A, don't worry, just look for the text balloon uh, and sometimes you will find this one instead. So don't worry, don't panic, it's there, just have to find it. So it's the letter A, uh, which is the icon, and that's for text. Now I always start with the text first. And how I do that, I literally go into my script, copy, and then paste it into here uh, as individual parts. Let's uh, have a quick look uh, how that's done. All right, so here we have the script and uh, in the first panel there was no text as we can see here so there's no dialogue so we're moving on to the second panel and there we have uh, Naomi that says be careful Logan the target has just activated a nearby device what I'm going to do I'm going to take this part of the dialogue 
I'm going to copy it, bring it into here, and then just click and paste. Right, so let's zoom in a bit as well so that it becomes a bit more clear. Now I'm only going to do this for one of these um, text balloons. Then after that, we'll speed it up so that you can just see all the rest. But I think it's important for you to see the first one. So what I want to do here is I don't want to make it too big. So be careful, Logan, the target has maybe split it here. Or maybe, yeah, maybe even more. Uh, maybe split it at uh, after the so the target has just activated maybe after just nope uh, see it's a little bit of playing around and see what works uh, okay so this looks about how I want to have it concentrated so I'm gonna put this more or less here and then I'm gonna go back to uh, I've put it here in the corner uh, I suspect it to be some kind of defensive mechanism. I'm going to add that as a separate text right here. Uh, let's see, am I... Yeah, add it there. There we go. So as a separate text, and here I'm going to cut it off somewhere in the middle. So something like that, uh, and remove the spacing here. So... Maybe something like this. Right, so what will happen here is there's going to be two text balloons, right? So the first one will be floating here, and then the one afterwards will be somewhere here. Now, now that we've got the text here in the layers, you can see it. These two are my um, text layers, and I like to organize things, so I will put this in a folder called Dialog. I'll bring them in. Right, and then uh, now I want to create a text balloon itself. Now, I recall that when I, if I select the actual uh, text layer and save for the sake of it, I just choose the ellipse balloon. So in the text um, menu, uh, you just go to the ellipse balloon. There's others, obviously. There's curves where you can really make fun little uh, balloon shapes yourself and uh, you can draw the balloon and but for now I'm just gonna make it very easy I'm gonna choose the ellipse balloon uh, just you can check all your menu settings here with your line color your fill color the type of shape that you want the balloon to be with rectangle uh, your brush size all that it's very very flexible and this is really awesome because what you're gonna see right now so I'm gonna drag more or less like the idea that I've got right there we go now, the thing is, you can try to select it like now, but it's not going to select. And there's a reason for it, because here we have a operation menu, and you can select objects with these, right? So when you select them, you can also modify the individual dots inside. You see, so it creates awkward shapes, but that's exactly what you might need sometimes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this around and now you see that these two are actually linked. The text and the balloon are linked unless I were to actually select the text, right? So that's very useful. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move the text a little bit more to center here. Uh, and I'm going to draw a second balloon. And here comes the fun part. This is what I like about Clip Studio Paint. The second balloon is for the, um, the second part of the text, but instead of drawing it over here, I'm going to draw that second balloon more or less here. I'll tell you why in a second. Right? These two are still linked. If I were to have drawn it right over the text here, then it would have linked to the text here. And this means that they are separate from each other. Right? How do I explain this? So if I were to try to connect a bridge between these two now, so I'll quickly try to do that. I'm, I'm explaining this because it's actually quite important to explain this. So if I were to try, for example, to draw a bridge, right, you'll end up with this little black line there. You don't want that. <clears throat> what you want is these two text balloons to be on the exact same layer. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to select the layer that was, uh, is it this one? 
Yep, exactly that one. I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to, within the layer, set, create this other text balloon a little bit off, off of it so that it doesn't detect the text straight away. Now I can move the text balloon, obviously. That's not a problem. See, I can, oops, there you go. And here I can modify it, make it bigger, uh, and sh give it a bit of a shape. Let's see, oops. Now, another thing I really believe in is giving your text some space, some room to breathe, the letters especially. You know, your your letters, they need to have a bit of space to breathe. So always keep in mind that edge. Again, if you want to go really detailed, you can always modify the text balloons yourself and, you know, modify it a bit more to fit what you're really looking for like a particular shape that works really well with the way that you have um, worked on your uh, text. Right, so once this is set up, now when I go back to the text balloon here, I go to the balloon pen, and here what I did, I modified my brush size to 9, so notify, notice how here it's at 5 for the actual ellipse, and here the balloon pen it's at 9. Reason being is because it just seemed to have worked better. Uh, so when I draw it now, look, you'll see this, it just becomes one and it's part of it. The same here, there are different ways of doing the balloon tail. Either you can literally just drag and drop and you say, okay, this is the balloon tail. Or you can try to do something a bit more creative and draw the balloon tail yourself. Oops. For that, I just go to the balloon pen <clears throat> and I try to somewhat draw it like that and there you go so that's how you do text in clip studio paint i'm going to speed things up for the other uh text balloons and then we'll catch each other again at the end of that All right, so now that we have all the text in place, the text balloons, it gives us a bit of an idea. Again, these are just rough text balloons. We can always come back to them and modify them later on to create a better final uh, look. But we're going to move on to the actual frames now. So I like to keep my dialogue, um, as you can see here in the layers, all the way at the top. The layout will have to go at the top now as well, but I'm going to lower the opacity a bit because we're going to start with the frames, uh, creating the individual frames. So here you have the frame tools. Um, you can find them back here and they're very useful because you can create rectangle frames, polyline frames. Basically what that does is it blocks in your panels and inside your panels it creates layers so that you can do your drawings there, your text, well basically all sorts of stuff. Um, the reason why I don't put my text balloons in there is because I like to have the text balloons over the actual uh, artwork uh, so that I can move the text balloons around anywhere outside of frame so they're not linked to the frames or panels themselves. Uh, let's just dive right into it and you can see what I mean. So I'm going to choose a polyline frame. Again, here you can choose all sorts of settings. I've just uh, made the brush size go up to 5 for this. You can also choose all sorts of stuff like anti-aliasing uh, and all sorts of uh, details here for curves, but I'm going to keep it quite basic and simple. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this particular um, panel, panel number one. So I go over it and this might not be very easy to see on the screen, but basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a um, yeah, shape here to define the frame. Now here you'll see it, it will say frame number one um, and when I go over it, it goes over my dialogue and my layout. For now it's no problem, I'll leave it like that. Later on I'll change it uh, and I will call this panel one. Right, and like that we're gonna move on to create all the other frames. This is quite useful, like I said, uh, because here you will be able to draw, for example, create your backgrounds, and then when you move your actual frame, all these drawings will come with it. And this blue 
uh, color that you're seeing outside of the white, it means that no matter how you draw, you will never draw outside of the box. It's very, very useful. All right, so here now you can see how every individual panel has been blocked in. This is very important. Uh, I've made sure that panel 3 is all the way behind panel uh, 1, which is this one, 1, 2, it's number 3, 4, and 5, so it's behind it uh, because there will be perspective and drawings behind it uh, with most likely a gradient going towards uh, the panel below it. And then, um, so yeah, you can see here how they're all blocked. And once I open them up, when I start penciling, I want to start penciling on these layers right here. So the good thing, like I said, if I start just doing any random lines here, uh, see, I can never get out of the panel. So that's that's really, really cool. It's very useful. It's like a mask, basically. Uh, and everything you, you do inside that panel, you can carry with you. So it's already kind of like done for you. Um, and yeah, that is quite important. Again, I keep my dialog above it. So, meaning that if I want to move around the dialogue separately, I still can, as you can see here. Uh, let's undo that. And yeah, that's pretty much it for now. I will leave the layout on 38% or anything, you know, just not too, too bright. So that I can always see what the idea is. And that's basically the general gist of layout. With this, I basically have an idea of where I'm going, what my panels are, and I can start the process of penciling, where I will also be using other techniques like the perspective guides to get the perspective right, and a really cool uh, 3D library that Clip Studio Paint has. But uh, that's for the next video. I'll see you guys there.